And when you cook better at home, you don't see it as a punishment, which as a result reinforces your desire to cook more at home. So when you remove the pain points, when you remove the inefficiencies and all the things that make cooking at home and eating at home feel bad, all of a sudden you don't feel like you're making a trade off at all. And I think that's really where the biggest opportunity is for a lot of people to start saving some monies. Julian and I'm Kirsten and today we're here with another reminder that you got food at the house and we are going to talk about some kitchen tech that makes cooking at home easier yeah but first April is financial literacy month for those that were unaware and to celebrate we are giving 25% off of our investing masterclass making money grow so when you use the code April 25 at checkout you will receive 25% off through the month of April. So the code is going to expire at the end of the month. And you can learn to be a confident investor in just under five hours. That's it, man. And you know what? Even if you don't need it, like going in line with the theme of this episode, which are low key gift ideas, <laughs> even if you don't need it, you can give it as a gift. That's an option at checkout. So if you have someone who is a recent college grad or someone that you've been throwing subtle hints at that they need to get on this stuff, it's a great gift idea. Yeah, so I find it to be a great supplementary gift, right? There are people who bought cashing out and I was like, all right, let's take things to the next level. Yeah. Here's something I can really get you excited so you can sink your teeth in. Yes. All right. So on to today's episode. I'm excited about this one because one, I posted an April Fool's joke on Instagram a couple of weeks ago <laughs> by the time this comes out. And it was like a fake article where we were saying that cooking food at home is one of the worst financial mistakes that you can make. And, everybody and the number it. of people, it, I was like, y'all. We did, we're pretty good at this. I, 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 I think <laughs> last year we did but the same thing. But y'all know us. Last year, we did the exact same thing, uh, and it looked like, I think it was a Jet magazine feature. I know, but then Jet launched. And then like, we had launched. to remind people that like Jet has not been in print for a very long time. And then it was like a couple weeks later, it was like, Jet's coming Welcome back. back to Jet. And it was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but this one, this one, cooking at home is always going to be one of the best financial decisions that you can make. And so we're definitely like pro cooking at home. And I love this topic because... Whenever we're interested in the same topic, but for different reasons, there's like some added benefit for the listener (laughs) because it's almost like hearing two podcasts in one because you get two different perspectives. And I'll let you go first. You tell me why you want to talk about it. Well, there are several reasons. I could dedicate an entire podcast to why I wanted to talk about this, but it was top of mind for me because a couple of weeks ago, we launched the financial technology toolkit. And I remember when we were creating it, I was like, man, there's an entire layer to technology that sort of leads people to the same goal. But you can look at it any number of ways. Like a lot of times people say, great, I understand. I know the importance of investing. I know all these things, but where is the money going to come from? And I have always thought about food as the biggest opportunity for people to find more savings by only really tweaking a couple of things that they already do in their lives. And I think food is just one of those stubborn budget categories that a lot of people feel will always be. And if anything, in the last couple of months, really last couple of years, people have realized that actually it's not nearly as stable as you want. You actually have to have a couple of tools and things that you can do that really allow you to manage and keep those things uh, under control, that that particular budget item. And all of that to say, like food obviously is something that I'm passionate about, is something that I did for a long time in a past life. And so I realized I needed to just stop for a second and introduce some of the things that I've been using to help more people cook better at home and as a result, save a lot of money. Yeah, I think for me, this one is personal because as many skills that I have, like I I can do a lot of things. Ooh, I'm about to edit this and (laughs) add like the little mini violin. As perfect as I am. There are occasionally a few things that I come across that I don't do well. God and I shouldn't even makes mistakes. I should <laughs> I shouldn't even say well because for this one it's not that I don't do it well. I just don't do it, which is cooking, right? I can hear the audible gasp 
vibes from the audience. Like, she don't cook, but like, hear me out. I don't even think they're saying that. I think they're saying, well, I wouldn't eat it if my hadn't. So, you know, it's fine. Yeah, it's not that I can't cook. I've seen on Instagram people who just can't cook. It's just that I don't cook. And I, and I think that's common to your point with a lot of couples, with a lot of households where somebody takes the lead as being the primary cook in the house yeah. and the other one is primary at other things. And so it was important for me because you're right. There's a timeline on that identity feature. You know, I think for a long time in my twenties, I was able to get away with it. Even in my thirties, I was able to get away with it. But at some point it becomes something that is a skill that you need. We all need to be able to feed ourselves. And I know that I'm not alone in saying that I don't cook, but that doesn't make it okay. Like we should all be able to cook. And when people like me are encountered with a situation where they need to feed themselves, we default to the easy things, yeah. the, the canned things, the microwavable things. And it creates this dilemma where you either aren't eating <laughs> or you're eating poorly or you're overspending. And those options are just not the only three in a world where kitchen tech, like what we're about to talk through, exists. Yeah, to me, the, the psychology runs a little deeper because what it does is when you don't enjoy what you cook, it feels as if the act of cooking at home and eating what you cook feels like a punishment, right? right. And so you've got this spiral and it feels like, man, I'm trying to save money, which means I need to punish myself by cooking at home. And what we're talking about isn't so direct as saying, hey, if you do these things, you'll save money. It's really a matter of saying, hey, when you cook better at home, you don't see it as a punishment, which as a result, reinforces your desire to cook more at home. So when you remove the pain points, when you remove the inefficiencies and all the things that make cooking at home and eating at home feel bad, all of a sudden, you don't feel like you're making a trade-off at all. Exactly. And I think that's really where the biggest opportunity is for a lot of people to start saving some money. And I think at the end of the day, cooking is a form of unpaid labor. And this wouldn't be a financial podcast if we didn't talk about ways that you can contribute yeah. to lower the burden for the other people in your house or teach your children to contribute. That's the other beautiful thing about these tools is that even if someone who is not the primary cook wants to help, these tools help them feel more confident because they remove sure. some of the guests work and some of the skill level and some of the muscle memory that the primary cook may have. Yeah. So today we're definitely going to talk through a couple of them that have made our lives easier and you get the benefit of hearing it from both a novice and a pro. So you get two sides of the coin. And we've even added some links to our Amazon storefront. So uh, if you want to purchase any of them, they are curated for you. I can't say that we've tried all of them, but I'm really good at like reading reviews and sussing out what's, what's a scam. So yeah. the ones that are there are pretty well vetted or have YouTube videos or comments or like, you know, or we've used them ourselves. Yeah. All right. So let's jump in. The first one is called the any day, yeah. one word, any day. And the any day is basically cookware. And the promise of the cookware is that it helps you cook anything in the microwave. Yeah. Now, what it looks like is like a frosted glass bowl with a lid. And the lid is actually where all of the magic happens. If you're watching it on YouTube, it's shown on the screen. Julian's doing his QVC <laughs> Moment. Oh, yeah, they do lose this on TV. <laughs> yeah, you're almost ready for TikTok. You got you got all that. You need to tap your nails on it or something. But <laughs> It's made out of glass. <laughs> do some ASMR. Oh, it's so sturdy. <laughs> it's sturdy. Yeah, so it's this... It's this frosted glass bowl with the lid, but you don't want to underestimate the lid because that's where all the technology is. The lid is what traps the steam into the dish, which prevents your food from getting dry or rubbery or some of the other things that happen when you traditionally cook food in the microwave. Yeah. And then the lid has this venting knob and like a silicon band around the, the rim, which is what prevents it from getting too much pressure. So you don't have to worry about it exploding or, or anything. Like, yeah. Like leading to some type of like messy, crazy cleanup or anything dangerous. Or, exactly. Yeah. Now, what I love about the any day is one that is multifunctional. You know, we're pretty much anti single use kitchen gadgets. You got to go back in the archives of the podcast to understand like why we don't buy things that only do one thing with the any day. You can use it in the oven. You can use it in the microwave. You can store your food in it. You can prep your food in it. Like it's a, it's a Swiss army knife. But the other thing is just how low effort it is. Like it's so easy yeah. and their website is full, like 
full of free recipes, but they also have cookbooks. They have this robust email strategy. So every day they're sending you new recipes. They have a community of folks who are actively like swapping secrets and telling people like what they made, what worked, what didn't work. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of Costco gang. Like if you know, you know. It, like, yeah, it is a very, <laughs> like, it, it, you're right. If you know, you know. And, and I feel actually like very proud to kind of be like in the club. Like I'm not even like thoroughly <laughs> a strong brand, you know, evangelizer for the any year, any day. But I feel like I'm getting there because the more I use it, the more I really fall in love with it. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to start there. But I'll take a step back because you were actually the one who bought it. I think yeah. I found it on YouTube or something and I saw it and I was like, wow, that's amazing. That's so encouraging that that's exactly what people need. And then if I'm being honest, it didn't blow up the way that I thought it was going to blow up. Like I thought more people would have been excited about it, but I don't think they saw the potential, right? They're right. not looking at it the same way that I did. So all of that to say, you bought it, it sat there. One day I just happened to be looking in the catacombs of the cupboard and I was like, oh, what is that? <laughs> not the and catacombs. I, I got deep in there and I was like, oh my gosh, something was pushed way back there. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to use it this week. And then honestly, I didn't even do it. I, I put it back and then it took another six months before I finally got it. And I said, you know what? Today's the day. I've got like the mental capacity. I've got the breathing room to do it. And my mind was blown. I was like, oh yeah, this is like, there's no yeah. turning back. And so let me talk a little bit more about it and how I use it um, every single day. Um, and what, what I think is interesting about this though, is that it's not so much that all the technology is within this glass silicone jar. It's the combination of that plus the technology that most people already have. Mm -hmm. Like all of us already have this amazing device. But the problem is most people don't think of their microwave as cutting edge technology because they only use like two buttons. Right. Like you, you're, you're yeah, probably, all them buttons. <laughs> it, there's like 15, 20 buttons on the microwave, but most people just do the add 30. They just sit there. 30, yeah, we don't even use 60, numbers. We don't even <laughs> put in like two minutes and 25 seconds. We just nah. go ahead 30 and, second and do increments 30 increments only. at a time and then you hit start and that's it. Right. There's a bunch of other buttons on there and what the any day kind of coerces you to use or like gently nudges you to use is the power level button, yeah. which is what opens up the world of possibilities. And so instead of like cooking rice, like some people may have a rice cooker, which is cool and we can do that as well. But now you've got this other device that's sitting on your counter, or if you're cooking rice in a pot, which most people I would imagine do, that's great. But you got to make sure that that mental mm -hmm. clock that's in your head, that you're going to go there and get it to turn the heat off because otherwise you're going to scorch it. Same thing with, let's say, couscous, or I'm just thinking of the things that I use it for, fish, um, thawing food sometimes. I've cooked bacon in the any day. Like if you just need it really quickly and I don't feel like going through the whole process, like I use the any day to cook all of these things. And the way that I can do it is because you adjust the power level. So if mm -hmm. you're cooking something and you want it to cook for a longer period of time, like rice, I'm going to adjust the power level down to four. And I'll tell you what, to your point about any day, I remember when I went onto the website and I found the recipe, I think I tagged them on Instagram and I said, you know what? I haven't quite perfected it yet. And they responded and said, oh, try this. And they were right. It was like, tweak the power level button to four. And so now I use power level four. I cook my rice after I rinse it off. I add the water and it comes out absolutely perfect in 22 minutes. That's it. And you move on. You go do something else. I move on. And yes. that is what, that's the thing that is almost hard to describe to people, right? It sounds simple, but when you have one less thing on the stove to think about, and you I just know stir it, it's 22 it. minutes, it's going to come out and it's going to be perfect. Not different this time and then the next time. It's going to come out perfect exactly the same way every single time. And you can move on to anything knowing that you've got 22 minutes in your head. You can fold clothes. You can put the baby to bed. <laughs> you can focus on the other thing, right? And that's the part that I think really, really makes the any day special just right now. But you can take it to the next level and cook entire meals. Like the one that we showed was just one size, but they've got a shallow version. Yeah. They've got Our big one is being used a currently. Large one. <laughs> it's in the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> we, we use it, which is another thing that I love about this. Like, I'm not trying to shade anyone that like doesn't find value in this, but we are not a family that just puts a lid on the pot and puts the pot in the fridge. We are not that family. With the any day, you can be that family and it yeah. actually doesn't look bad, right? Right. You just put the lid back on it, the same lid that you cook. Yes. And it looks like a glass storage dish. Yes. No different than what you have, which I think 
is another kind of added benefit. But yeah, the any day is really, really cool. And I don't want to just give all the love to any day, even though I love them. There are other kind of products, comparable products. If you don't like this one or don't like the color, even though they have different colors, you can find other devices. But the point is the existing technology that you have, you're already halfway there. You have a microwave. What you don't likely have is a device that allows you to make cooking at home easier by using your microwave, not just to reheat things, but to actually cook the food that you're exactly. getting ready to enjoy. And that is like the really, really big thing. Yeah. So not only does it allow you to eat fast foods in a healthy way, right? Because if you think about how you use your microwave now, whether it's to heat up a frozen dinner or to warm up something that came packaged and processed, yeah. the any day is what allows you to use raw materials to make pasta. If you want ravioli for lunch, okay, well, you just put the tortellini, not tortellini, that's the wrong pasta, but you put you put the ravioli in the, ravioli is a bad example. Um, if you, <laughs> if you mean, wanted tortellini for lunch or pasta with red sauce, okay. you could cook the pasta in the any day from scratch, mm -hmm. like using raw pasta with water, a little bit of oil, and then you can add in your sauce and you have this dish that wasn't frozen in advance. It wasn't, you know, all these chemicals aren't in it. The same is true for snacks, right? If you need a quick snack, you can microwave up some edamame instead yep. of reaching for a bag of chips or whatever it is. So I think this tool is for anyone that is trying to eat healthier. You're aware that you spend a lot of money on processed foods, or you're just trying to cut back because of the sodium or the sugar, whatever's in it. This allows you to know exactly what you're eating and it allows other people in your household to help you. Yeah. So if you have teenagers or spouses or anybody that's at home that can give you a head start on dinner, think about all the times our mom asked us to take the chicken out to thaw. Like <laughs> this is the new that, like this is the new Take the chicken out for people who have shorter attention spans or who may not have the best memories or just don't, you don't have five hours. Like if you can tell your 16 year old to go ahead and put the rice in the any day or go ahead and start the salmon for dinner, that just allows you to come home and do your part. And yeah. I just think that that level of teamwork for under I don't I don't remember how much we paid for it, but you know, one bowl is certainly under 50 bucks. Like yeah. you can, you can at least experiment with the small one. Like we've shown you before you buy the multi-set. We now at this point have the large, the medium, the yeah, small. I think we have four. Yeah. I think we have four of them now. Yeah. We have four. Of them. And the last thing I'll say is because it's glass, thick glass, it's so much easier to clean too. Right. Yes. So like instead of like, you can put it in the dishwasher, you can put it in the dishwasher. Just like wipe it's it down. super easy to clean. And so like, yeah, I, it, it has very quickly become one of my absolute favorite tools. And I'm so glad I got over that hump of cooking in the microwave because like, I remember the first time I was like, that sounds crazy. But the more I've used it, the more I've really come to just incorporate it into mm -hmm. my normal cooking routine. So the yes. any day microwavable food safe dish yes. storage thing is like a game changer. Yes. Get it for the person in the dorm room. Get it for, get it for, get it for yourself. Get it, get for, it for, yourself. for your mama. Get it for everybody. <laughs> Give me one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next up is actually your tool. Like it's your, it's your thing. It is. It is. So this is, um, I, I will shout out the brand and I'll show it to you. This one's pretty sexy. This is the uh, Inkbird. This is called the Inkbird. It's a wireless thermometer. And if you're looking on YouTube, like you're seeing me holding up this device and I am have it in this container and inside it is this thing that almost looks like a little missile, but this is actually a wireless. This is the last thing that I would have compared that to. I would have said a pin. Like well, a all missile of these things is... look pretty phallic. We're going to talk about that in just a second. <laughs> like my mind goes there. And so I'm trying really hard not to make like jokes that force us to adjust the rating <laughs> on this podcast, but it's a wireless thermometer. And I had no intentions or plans to buy a wireless thermometer. I already have a thermometer. I have different types of thermometers. I got you a thermometer. You got me a, a, a big old. <laughs> um, it was, it like, was cutting edge at the time. It was a three piece. <laughs> it's a three piece <laughs> thermometer set where there's like one that connects to two different receivers, which I still use uh, every yes. now and then. Look, men are difficult to buy for. It, it's not really, <laughs> not really. But the reason why I think this one is so unique because. 
I know what, like when you bought the other thermometer, I, I know what you thought you were solving for. Mm -hmm. You solved for half the problem, which was great. And so here's what most people don't understand. Let's say you like to grill. And typically, if you really like to grill, you kind of graduate from like grilling to now I want to do some smoking. And, you know, now you're caught up in the, oh my gosh, my husband wants to be a grill master, barbecue pit master and all that stuff. The problem is it's really expensive to buy these things. And then with that comes a lot of stress and concern about if I get it wrong. Mm -hmm. Because if you get it wrong, you spend a lot of money and a lot of time trying to do something that was just okay. Yeah. Or that you just didn't Or you get, get a reputation. Correct. For the person who makes tough steaks. Correct. Dry burgers. Correct. You don't Correct. let him make the chicken no more. Correct. It's dry. Correct. And yeah. so that is the challenge, right? And I, and I think what this does is it solves for that. And so here's how it works. Basically, most thermometers are solving for one thing, which is telling you what the temperature is of the food that you're trying to cook. So whether it's a pork show, let's say it's a leg of lamb, just making it up. And you've got to cook it to 160 degrees, right? Just making it up. And you put the thermometer in there when in those moments when you want to test it. So you might halfway through where you believe go and test to see how close you are to your target temperature. And then you pull it out. Then you, maybe you come back a little later on. And if it's there or if it's right under, you're going to make a decision whether or not you're going to take it on or pull it out. What this does is it takes it a step further because the thermometer, it's actually two thermometers in one. There's the part that goes inside the food, which lets you know what the temperature is inside the food, measuring the target temperature. But the part that is still outside is actually measuring the ambient temperature. So now you can tell what the temperature is in your oven, which you might say, well, why do I need to know that? Because my oven says it's set to 350 degrees. Newsflash. I'm pretty sure most people's oven in the United States are not calibrated correctly, right? It's just like anything else. Like you used it one time, it was calibrated the moment it was sent to you and you've been using it or it's been used for decades. It's probably off a little bit, which is why sometimes it's so hard for people to kind of perfect or they say, well, I don't know what happened this time or I don't know why it's taking so long. It's because like, I know you said, or it's set to 350 degrees. That's what it says there. But there may not necessarily be an internal thermometer telling you that. Yeah. This is telling you it's set it to 350. That's also why people are able to get away with only cooking on one temperature. Like you ever met somebody that cook everything at 375 oh, three, three, or oh, 350? Most people is that. Is it 350? 350 is like the magical number. <laughs> like just for most put it on people. 350. Everybody and thinks, you can leave it in longer or, or take it out sooner. But like. Yeah. And because outside of 70 degrees, in our minds, 350 degrees is like scorching hot. Yeah. When in the world of cooking 350 degrees is actually like warm. Like that's yeah. what you bake at, which is why you don't get the browning on whatever it is that you're looking for. You need to be going north of that. But anyway, the beauty of this device is because it's measuring both whatever it is that you're trying to cook and the ambient temperature, well, you add in a little bit of technology and then basically through the app, because it's a wireless thermometer, there's an app that you connect to. You can basically see exactly where you are and how long it's going to be before you're food is ready. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter whatever it is. You're cooking a piece of chicken and it needs to get to 165. You can tell that the oven is at 345 degrees. You can tell that the chicken is at 130 and then about two minutes is going to hit its target. And you can tell yourself when or tell the device to tell you when you want it to alert you. Mm. So here's a little beep. Now you can go look. Now you can go check instead of what most people do, which is the constant guessing game. I don't really know. I don't want to burn it. I don't want to overcook it. I want it to be perfect. I don't really know. Now you can kind of remove all of the stress that comes with that and focus that attention elsewhere. You can go do any of the other things that you need to do that day, or you can just kind of relax and know that you got 22 minutes to watch Abbott Elementary, <laughs> whatever it is. You have that flexibility and it just removes the stress and the guessing game from cooking. Yeah. Cause I, I remember you telling me every time that, cause I'm, I'm a checker. I'm a checker. Yeah. Every time you do that, you throw off you're the temperature out in the, the thing that you're, you're cooking. All the yeah. Heat out. yeah. Yeah. I, I want to talk about who this is for because we can Alton Brown geek out on this stuff all the time. I remember when you, when it came in the mail and I thought it was a Bluetooth speaker because you don't buy things like you. I mean, you do, but you don't really 
buy things you don't necessarily need. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, he found another Bluetooth speaker that is slimmer or maybe it has a long, maybe it's louder. I don't know. But then you told me it was a thermometer and that you had used, I think my mama gave you a gift card for your birthday or something. Like yes. you used, you used somebody else's money, which is why and I was my, like, my wish list was already done. I was yeah. like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I know enough to know this. Like I can sit on it and then something will pop in my head. And that's what happened here. I was like, I guess I could buy that, but I don't really need it because I have all these other devices. And because I'm already so attuned, I didn't think about getting a thermometer because I pretty much know what I'm doing. But then when I got it, I was like, oh man, like I really don't have to think nearly as much, even though like, it's not something that like scares me or intimidates me. But was that obvious in like the copy and the description of the thing? No. You just, you just decided like, what about it? What problem were you facing that made you say, you know what? I'm willing to try this thing? That's a great question. And and I think this is the thing that connects the dots to like all of the devices that we're talking about. It's about quality of the experience and not yeah. feeling like you're like, like it's a stressful thing. Even for me, someone who was comfortable cooking, it can be stressful sometimes. And, and nobody likes making the trade-off. Like, you know, the difference between a nice meal and I'm just trying to eat because we got to eat. And if we don't eat, we ain't going to make it. This allows you to say, I don't have to like I can make something that's a little bit more complicated that that requires a little bit more care on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I don't have to reserve lamb for Fridays and Saturdays or when we have a babysitter or anything like that. You can do that anytime you want. Right. And I think that is the thing that encourages you to want to cook more yes. because it's like, oh, wow, it's not a special occasion. It's just Tuesday. It's just Wednesday. And you have these devices that make the process easier, but they act like a safety mechanism in ways that allow you to just relax and enjoy the experience a little bit. Like I legitimately love knowing that there's something in the oven. I can watch something on TV and I don't even have to get up to go look. I can just look on my phone and see, oh, I got about five more minutes. Yes. Keep on going. Yeah. Or now nah, is a good time to stop. Or, hey, maybe I want to go ahead and wash the dishes now and get a head start versus not having to think about, oh, my hands are wet. And by the time my hands are wet, I'm still going to have to do this other thing. It just removes a, an entire category of things that you need to think about. And it just makes cooking easier. Yeah. The person I see like that would really appreciate this. It's the person, you know, every year around Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, like there's a gift list for the person who has everything. Yeah. This is for the person who has everything, including a grill that they don't use enough. Yeah. We all know those people. They've received a grill, but it's a hassle to open it. To your point, there's a lot of risk and stakes involved with, <laughs> pun intended, a lot of stakes involved with if you mess it up because yeah. people have waited all day. But you're right. We use our grill almost like like a second oven because of the way that fire like flames actually transform the food that you're eating. Yep. So even if you're a chicken family and y'all eat chicken five days a week out of the, you know, in any given week, chicken on the grill, like gr actual grilled chicken yeah. tastes very different than baked chicken, than roasted chicken, than any other type of chicken. And the absence of wondering if what you're doing is wrong is what makes this so useful and yeah. what makes people want to use the technology that they already have. You don't have to worry about whether there's going to be grill marks or whether you need to flip it. Like the, it's going to tell you exactly what temperature it is. You don't have to worry about if it's medium or well, like you can follow along and make an informed decision. And so, yeah, I would say for those, you know, we're hitting the summer, summer season. Yeah. For those of you that want to do more outdoor cooking, or maybe you have like an indoor, you know, one of those smokeless grills that you can do inside. This is a great tool to ensure that whatever you're putting on it doesn't get overcooked or undercooked. Yeah. Yeah. You know, again, you have to think about it the same way you do any other technology, which is the fact that most really great technologies remove the requirement for expertise, right? It solves for that problem. And it almost makes expertise in a way obsolete. This exactly. idea of knowing exactly what it is because you've been doing this for 10, 20 years doesn't really matter because you just have a simple device that you can use that allows you to tap into that expertise yeah. without going through the 20 years to kind of build it into your own kind of feel for cooking. You still need that, obviously, because if you just leave it on there, you're probably going to run into some issues, but it's these little things. And, and I think especially the next tool that we're going to talk about is is one of those things that I think just make cooking easier, removes the obstacle or the challenges or the tension. And then it just kind of makes you 
cook better. Yeah, because relax, like, you, child. You, yeah, you know you're going to get it right. You don't have to worry about that part. It's really just a matter of making sure that you're not so caught up in whatever it is that you're watching that when it's done, you can go in there, take it out, and then you're ready to go. And for people like me, that's what we need. Like, that's why I don't cook. It allows it's you to stressful off. experience. Yep. Like, it, this removes the stress. So it was the perfect segue because the next tool is the sous vide. The sous vide. Which, sous vide. Sous vide. It's a French word, right? Yes. S O U S. It's two words S O U S and then vide. V I D E. Yeah. I don't know how it translates, but I remember, <laughs> I remember when we got one. And I actually remember, I think it was Nasima that was visiting us where we first like pulled it out in front of a guest. Do you yeah, remember that? I, I don't remember that, but I, I might be lying. Nasim will keep me honest, but I think we used it. Like, I don't think that was we the first did. time we had a, like, someone who observed us using it. And I saw how people, like, have never. People always react whenever yeah. they see it. Um, and I always love when people see it, but don't react because they're like, I don't know what that is. I don't know yeah, what like, they Y'all want. boiling me. But they look, it looks <laughs> like you're just, you're just cooking something on, on, on a rand in a pot somewhere. I, I tell you what, though, I always, um, Every time I see it, so I'll show this one too. Every time I pull out my sous vide, and they don't all look like this, but every time I pull it out, it always reminds me of a scene in the movie um, Brown Sugar. Remember Brown Sugar? There was a scene with uh, Queen Latifah, who I think was helping the Sanaa Lathan character move in to her brownstone or something like that. And she was unpacking her stuff and she pulled out of a box, basically like a dildo. <laughs> yeah. and that's what this looks like. Her massaging tool. And she was like, it's a massager. And she was <laughs> yeah. like, okay. This is, that's kind of yeah, what Yeah, it's like a long like. tube, like a, you know, it except is a little phallic. A, except it has a cord. Yeah. Um, and but, some of them, you know, some some personal massagers come with cords. Oh, man, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Requires something stronger than a battery. Yeah. Well, you know, with technology now, that, that might YouTube. be another episode. Yeah. Sex tech. That's some sex tech to help you. <laughs> like, girl, you don't have to plug that in no travel. more. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, so the sous vide is, is an amazing, amazing tool. I actually use it more than any of the other tools. Um, and it kind of does the same thing as a thermometer, except it's ex assessing the temperature or, or managing the temperature of the water. So basically you made the comment of like, it looks like you're cooking something in water, but like it's, it's hard to explain. So I'll just walk you through the steps. Let's say I wanted to make steak. Just the other night I made steaks. You take the steak, you season the steak, and then you put it in a vacuum sealed bag. We have a vacuum sealer. If you don't have a vacuum sealer, you can still use a regular, like a freezer bag, but there mm -hmm. are ways for you to kind of ensure that all of the air comes out of it. And then you place the bag inside the pot that is filled with water. And the water is kind of cycling through because of the sous vide. And what the sous vide machine is doing is it's managing the temperature of the water. It's getting it hot. It's keeping that water hot. And as a result, because the bag is in the water, it's slowly cooking the food that you have. Right. And once that product reaches its target temperature, it will stay there and it will manage that for two, three hours. So, or however long, it just kind of depends on whatever it is that you're cooking. So imagine what, what I just said in terms of, I really wanted to have something nice tonight, but like, I don't have the time to do that. Cause like when I cook steak, like I really need to focus on cooking steak. You could literally have your steaks ready to go at five o'clock, leave it warm and it will be the perfect temperature. It mm -hmm. will not overcook. It will not undercook. It will maintain that temperature. I want to say for up to like three hours and then come seven o'clock when you're ready to eat, all you need to do is take it out of the bag, cut it open, pat it dry mm -hmm. and sear it and brown it. And you will have the perfect, whatever it is, medium rare, medium, medium well, whatever temperature you want, you set it to that temperature. You can monitor it through the app the same way that you do with the Inkbird. And it will tell you how to do it or it'll tell you when it's ready, how long it's been resting, how much time you have, all of that stuff. Like it just mm -hmm. does it all. And again, just gives you the freedom and the flexibility to do all the things that you want to do without worrying about whether or not you're going to mess up your dinner. Yeah. And I think it intimidates people because when you first take it out the bag after it's been cooked, it looks, it looks like, like a, a like brain. a yeah, like a baby animal, like yeah. a hairless you're, you're cooking cat. something <laughs> without browning it. So Correct. that part looks unusual. Yeah. It's like it looks gray. And it's like, yes. well, why does it look that way? It's because like that's how anything would look if you just threw it in Correct. you know, water. But when you brown it, 
it will look absolutely So there's perfect. a second step. You have to take it out of the bag. I guess you let it rest for a little you bit. You don't need to make it rest, which oh, is don't. another mind-bending Perfect. Thing. It doesn't have to rest. It's cooking at such a low temperature. You let something rest when it's when you blasted it with a high temperature, and now you're it's readjusting to like room temperature. Okay. But in this case, you, it doesn't have to rest. So it, you take it out the bag, and then you throw it on the pan, the yep. skillet, whatever it is, the grill, and brown it. That's it. It takes, what, five, ten minutes, depending on what it is? Two minutes. Two minutes. And then you have this restaurant-quality steak that yep. is prepared every time. And we're talking about steaks, but we also use the sous vide to reheat foods. Correct. And so that's another benefit where it's like, you know, if you made ribs and there's some ribs left over, if you put them in the microwave, they can dry out or brisket or anything. Yep. We use the sous vide to gently reheat food that we've already had. And it tastes the exact same. Sometimes it tastes Sometimes better. Sometimes it tastes better. <laughs> like, I, and there's a reason for that. But like, let me just break that down, right? So let's say I cooked a 12 pound brisket. We're not going to eat 12 pounds of meat. I'm going to vacuum seal probably eight of those pounds and cut that up into like, you know, two and a half, you know, pound increments or something like that. And I put the rest of them in the freezer. When I'm ready to eat, we're ready for dinner. I can literally take that frozen vacuum sealed block of brisket, dump it into a sous vide bath. It will gently bring that water. Um, it will gently bring the brisket up to temperature. And when it's time to eat, cut it open and you will have the juiciest, tastiest Man, brisket. Like it literally tastes better than when it comes off like day one. It in does. And I'm from Texas. So like you can put that on everything. It's some good. It's so good. It's really good. It is a necessary tool for like meat eaters, <laughs> like barbecue eaters. And the other thing that I really like about it when I think about like who this tool is perfect for, it's perfect for those people who 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 value date nights, right? Who yeah. value delicious meals with their partner, but pay a price for that. The fact that you can make an amazing steak at home around your schedule and not worry about whether it is going to be cooked correctly or, or just as, as enjoyable. As such and such restaurant where you're paying hundreds of Listen, dollars. Listen, and you can eat it in your pajamas sure while you can. watch <laughs> sure movies. Can. That is worth, man. It's it, also a great way if you have kids like we do. Well, we only have one. But like if you have a kid, it's also a great way to introduce them to foods in a safe space. So if you want your kid to be able to try steak or pork shoulder or whatever, it doesn't, you know, you, you're doing that at home. And if they don't like it, it's not like you got to send it back. Like yeah. it's it, it costs you nothing. I guess the third persona that I see this tool for are people who have the memberships to a Costco or people who live near a market where they have premium meats, but they're too intimidated to try them. You know, you walk by this meat section and you might see ribeye on sale for Valentine's Day or you might yeah. see pork shoulder or whatever it is. And you don't buy it because you don't know how to prepare it. Exactly. This takes that guesswork out and allows you to diversify your menu beyond just ground beef and chicken. You can add some things. Things, try some things and really take advantage of this piece of technology that, you know, it's, I think it's always existed. I don't know that it's been this it, cost efficient. It hasn't efficient. always existed. So it used to just be something that most high-end restaurants would use. And this is back when I was cooking. They were they just started to become a part of like most fine dining restaurants. And they were giant devices. Like they, they were not... They were commercial products, right? This is typically the path for a lot of things. They start, you know, commercial being commercially available, and then someone finds an application for it in everyday use. They make them smaller. They make them a little easier to use, and then people can just buy them. And so now they, you can pretty much find them anywhere. And this one is actually pretty fancy because there's like, there's, I think there's like no buttons and it's all Bluetooth. They have some that are cheaper. You, I'm pretty sure you can get one for maybe around a hundred bucks, maybe less. Uh, this one's a little pricier because it has a bunch of other bells and whistles and because the in-app experience is so cool. Like it tracks your cooking history. So I can literally just say, oh, yeah, whatever I did on this day, do that again. And it just sort of runs that cycle again because there's so much data that is tracking based on whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah. They also have visual cooking doneness guides. So if you're not really sure about your temperatures, you can literally look at it and say, do you want it to look like this? Do you want it to look like this? Do you want it to look like this? And it's like, oh, yeah, that's what I want it to look like. Hit that button and then it will start up and start cooking for you. But again, going back to the, the last one, I think... What it also does, because I think your point about Costco is, is so spot on, it encourages you 
to buy the thing that you likely would not have bought before. Yes. Or that you only buy in restaurants. Or that you only buy in restaurants. Because you're thinking like, ah, I don't cook that. I don't know how to cook that. And I don't want to mess it up. This, again, eliminates the likelihood that you're going to mess it up. Very similar to the wireless thermometer. You're not going to mess it up unless you don't understand numbers, right? Like (laughs) put it to 145 degrees. If you mistakenly put it to 150, it's going to be 150. The same is true whether using a thermometer or you're cooking it with a sous vide. If you can perfect that part, the only other thing you would need to do if you're using a sous vide is brown it off. And again, we're talking about two minutes worth of cooking time at this point. And I think that is what really, really makes Again, like this tool is so cool because it just allows you to save money. You will be less likely to go out and buy steaks the Listen, moment you learn let me say you how to make it at home or lamb or duck or certain kinds of fish, whatever it is, you will without question be less likely to do it. You're going to look twice, Listen, three times at the menu prices because you know you can do better at home. Let me tell you something. We we gave a sous vide to Joel, our videographer we and did. family friend as a housewarming gift. That was like our thing where it's like, you get married now, big boy, you would coming to dad, like this is what you need. <laughs> and this, just this morning, he posted a picture uh, on Instagram that his wife had made him some steak and eggs for breakfast. And I was like, I bet she used that sous vide because that's what it unlocks, right? <laughs> you want steak and eggs for breakfast? It is not this lift. It's just a matter of putting that thing in the water. You can put it on at six o'clock if Listen. you want to. And then uh, you ready to eat? Yes. Like, great. And then have it ready at 730 or whatever time it is to your it's, point. Yeah. It is the perfect tool for people who are making trade-offs between having nice meals and their busy day, week, evening, or just the bandwidth they have. Yeah. Like this closes that gap. You can have a nice meal whenever you want one. You want steak on a Tuesday morning or you want lamb on a Thursday night. You can do that without needing to make a reservation, or hire a baby. You work from home and you want to do it for lunch? Listen, we eat lamb for lunch on a, I be trying not to brag because you know, we, (laughs) it's heavy on the rich and not on the regular, but we do, we eat, we eat lamb, we eat steak on a regular basis because it's not a lift for us. It's just, it's a matter of planning and making sure that, you know, we have the room to eat it. So that is the sous vide. So next up is an electric lunchbox. Which sounds, I know, um, I know, like like nineteen eighties. It does, it does, and I, I wanna I wanna give some context because Electric I first a lunchbox. <laughs> I first learned about these because somehow I fell into the blue collar wife algorithmic rabbit hole on Instagram, and for those who are not familiar. There are a group of women who wake up at like 3 and 4 a.m. to make their husband's lunches because their husbands work blue collar jobs. They might be the people like adjusting the telephone wires, hard jobs, construction, and you need something hearty and you need something warm. And so these women wake up early, they cook a meal from scratch, and then they put it into these electric lunch boxes. And it made me think to when I was packing Bo's lunches for school, he just had a thermos and a, and the thermos, like when I was making lunch for him, they're okay. They're fine. Yeah. But I would warm it up. Like I would boil water. I would put the water in the thermos to heat yeah. it up even further because you can't put metal in the microwave. Yeah. And then once the, once it was warm, I dumped the water out, put the food in and hope that that kept the food warm until lunchtime. This is like a thermos on steroids. Like this combines. It, it also just seems like such an obvious innovation. I know. Like I know this isn't like, uh, this is new for me. I apologize. I'm cutting you off. But like <laughs> I know I stumbled upon, it came to my algorithm and uh, for, I guess, an entirely different reason the other day. And they were like, oh yeah, they've had those for a while. And I was just completely blown away. And, and my thought wasn't even for blue collar workers. It was just for white collar workers. Like you can work in a Well, office. yeah, that's what I'm getting to. And it's like, man, like anything is better than the same old stuff. And yes. it's like, you have the ability to have a warm lunch that's still, I mean, that's not even warm, right? Like we're so conditioned to just saying like warm, it can be a hot lunch. It's a hot lunch. It's a hot lunch. And yes. it makes perfect sense. Yes. We have benefited as consumers from the magic of electrical engineering in so many areas of our yeah. lives. Like we now can like have a battery operated light bulb. We can charge our phones, use it just like touch. Like we have benefited from it, except in this area. And what this does is takes a thermos and adds a heating element. Like it seems so simple, but because women have been the primary consumers, the primary person responsible for like the lunch making and the whatever, it just got pushed down the list. Yeah. But now it's here. Yeah. And 
it's a game changer. Like some of them are battery operated, so they require you to charge them, which has its limitations. You got to, you know, eat within a certain time window. But there are others that have cords. And if you can plug it into your car's, you know, Volt, what is that called? Or like at the, your desk. Or, or at your desk like or your computer, you your USB in. dock, whatever. You can keep it warm for as long as you need it to. But when you think about the use cases of some of these things, if you've ever had like a baseball tournament or a swim meet, or you've ever um, been on a road trip or had a beach day and you are just so used to defaulting to sandwiches and yes. chips and salads, but you know, after you've been outside all day and that heat, you need something hearty. Yeah. And what it creates is when you don't have that balanced nutrition, it just creates like a spiral of problems. It, it you takes start away to, from the entire experience. Yes. Right? You over order, you over the crowd to like get out there and leave where you are because everybody's thinking to have lunch at the same time. And it's like, imagine if you didn't have to do that. Yes. Your lunch was ready. You weren't sacrificing the temperature or any of your nutritional needs or any of that stuff. Like you could just literally sit there and have a hot meal as if somebody just cooked it in the kitchen and it was just delivered to you. Yes. It just requires you to think in advance and plan in advance. And you're absolutely right. The first thought that came to mind was, I think when we were in Miami, uh, I think that was last summer or last fall. And I remember we went and stopped at Publix to try to get some lunch. And I remember thinking like, gosh, oh, it's like my worst. Ugh. I was like, we got to get a Pick a sandwich, buddy. Get a wrap. <laughs> Pick a cold sandwich and like just you're, you're literally making a decision based on what's not going to be absolutely terrible yeah. by the time you're ready to eat it. You don't want to, you can't keep it cold. You don't want it to get too hot. And just, I was like that entire trade off. And then I was like, wow, when I saw this device, I was like, man, we could have went to the hot bar. Or we maybe didn't even have to make the trade off of getting cold chicken fingers. You could have just got the chicken fingers and if put that's them in what there. you wanted, put it in there, kept it hot, and then opened it up. And then guess what? It's hot yes. and ready to go. Not warm because you've kept it warm from the thermos. And there's basically a time limit. So you better have it by 1230 because yeah. by one o'clock it's mushy. It just keeps it hot. Yeah. And it's like so simple. It's like so simple. that to me is something that I think anyone that still has to go to the office, but Certainly a lot of people who um, spend some time or elongated periods of time where they're outside or just are tired of being inconvenienced and waiting in line. Like yeah. this to me, I think is one of those kitchen or cooking technological advances, if you will, yeah. that literally solve a problem. And it's just, I don't think it's quite taken off here yet. I think yes. it's taken off in other parts of the world, but um, I'm hoping it takes off here. Yeah. I would say this is for the people who need a hot meal. And I know some people are like, who needs a hot meal? There are people who need a hot meal because of whatever reason. I remember we used to work with a woman who was anti-sandwich. And when she had a sandwich, she always had to warm it up. Yeah. Like she could not eat a cold sandwich. And it was because she ate so many cold sandwiches growing up. And that's a valid reason. Like yeah. you might be cold sandwiched out. If you have some level of trauma attached to that, then, you know, like, <laughs> that's not funny. She was serious. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> she was serious. But like in, in the times where she could not leave the office to go find or source a hot meal, she would bring that little sad sandwich and heat it up in the microwave because... That's what she had. And so this is a solution for people who need a hot meal, but are spending a ton of time or money always looking for one. Yeah. This is also for the person who works really long days or just has, even if you're not working, just has a lot of long days in their lives for multiple reasons. If you've ever sat at a hospital with someone for hours on end for a surgery or because they're delivering a baby, yep. this is an alternative to that cafeteria. This is an alternative to fast food. If you've ever sat with someone at a senior living facility, again, these are alternatives that can really make somebody's day that don't require an oven or even a microwave. And even if you just like to like eat outside the break room, that was always my issue. I didn't want to go in the break room to warm up my food. <laughs> like it stinks. I, it stinks. I didn't want to use that microwave. Like this allows you to still have warm food and go eat it in your car or on that little bench outside that you go to, whatever it is. And they look cool. They do look cool. They actually look cool. Like it looks like you're eating out of a video game console or something. Yeah, it looks like, like you in 2034, it like looks, you in the future. You from Singapore, like you're in Singapore. This is some Japanese, Singaporean. They probably had it for, for 40 sure, years. I'm 100%. You can get soup out of a vending machine I'm over there. I'm 100% confident <laughs> yeah. that this is where this actually started because yeah. like they because of the type of cuisine that they have. But like, yeah, it, I think is a game changer. If I was still going into an office without question, this would be like one of the things that I have yeah. with me all the time. All right. We have one more and this is the last one. And I'll be honest that 
you know, I'm going to tell the people the truth. You didn't want to add this to the list, but I I don't consider it technology. (laughs) It is. It was, it was this one and the vacuum sealer. Cause I wanted to add the vacuum sealer, but you said we've talked about it enough. Yeah. I was going to add a disclaimer, like without question, the first thing is vacuum still team food saver vacuum sealer. Everyone should have one. Go back and listen to any of our other food related podcasts. We've spoken enough about the vacuum sealer. That to me is like a given. Yeah. That's a default. This is more like newer things that we likely haven't spoken about. But go ahead, talk okay. about your little air fryer. It's the air fryer. Go ahead. Come on, air fryer gang. Air fryer. Back me up in the comments. I like air, the fryer air fryer gang. Listen, I know they have been overhyped to an extent, but I still meet people that don't have one or have one and don't use them. Like most kitchen gadgets that are as hyped up as the air fryer don't live up to be what they, what people say. Like I remember the instant pot. I remember all these devices. Um, I forgot what the other one was before that, but you go back to the forum and grill, which actually did live up to the hype, but like (laughs) some of them don't live up to the hype. The air fryer is a staple. Like I always keep a list of universal gift ideas. These are just things that I think everybody could use like kettlebells. There was a while where I was giving people kettlebells where it's like, dog, this is all you need. This is one thing you can do five minutes a day, strengthen that core, yada, yada, yada. It's important for women to strengthen that core. But at the end of the day, this got added to my list to the extent where my mama got an air fryer for Christmas last year because I was tired of going to her house and not having one. Like my brother would bring his over and set it up. And I was like, this is just ridiculous. (laughs) Like you need your own, if not for me, then for your grandchildren and for quick meals for them. But like, it's such a it's such a clutch tool. My mom is probably a better example because she actually uses her she air does. fryer. And I remember when she didn't really know what it did. And I think, you know, it's layered, right? Part of it is that she's an older Caribbean woman. And when she thinks about cooking, if you're not cooking in that particular way, then it's not going to taste the same until she used the air fryer. And she was like, oh, wow. Well, it's different. This is this is a game changer. And now she can't live without it. Right. Because hers broke and I had I to get know, her one in 48 hours. I don't know what we've been doing. Right. I think and, I had to do same day delivery. Like, girl, broke, it's okay. Broke because she's been using it every single day. <laughs> but yeah, it, it is it it is a game changing piece of I guess you can call it technology, sure. But like most of them don't really have like any other added bell or whistle. But like the, it, my beef is not so much with the air fryer themselves, it's the use of the word fry. It's not a fryer. Right. It's not. It's a it's a convection oven. That's what it is. It's a but hyper it's portable. convection oven. And they're mini in most yeah. cases. You can and put so, it in your car. You can put it in your trunk. You can I don't put know. it in your dorm room. You can bring it into the extended Correct. stay hotel. You can bring it on your road trip. Correct. They're yeah. portable. We use it for cooking. We use it for reheating. I'll be specific. Like we use it for spring rolls, coconut shrimp. Um, why chicken am I fingers, chicken, chicken fingers, nuggets, chicken nuggets, uh, wings from raw to cooked. Yeah. You can use it to cook thighs if you want. You can use it like to cook roast vegetables if yes. you want to. Like it's, it's really, really great too. Easy to clean. Um, it, it gets up to temperature really quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Which shortens it, the timeline. Correct. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a clutch cooking device. And it doesn't make sure. your house hot when you turn it on. Like you use the oven for everything. That's what I mean. Like there's you, a 15, 20 minute ramp up period. Yeah. And for people who hot. don't have AC, like centralized AC in yeah. their homes or just don't want to be standing in front of an oven, that's enough to like not make you want to cook. And I think people, <laughs> this solves for that. I think people may be thinking, you know, I don't know if toaster ovens are still big or not but i think that's people what think people think they're toaster thinking, ovens yes is that well i don't need that i've got a toaster oven it don't get hot like, enough it, it does not get nearly as hot it's not as fast this is a way better portable smaller oven alternative and don't base your opinion of air fryers if you bought like a combination toaster oven air fryer thing that's what i mean because that's what my mom did she swore she had one but what she had was a toaster oven that had an air fryer setting (laughs) which is not the same thing like at least the one she bought it was the hamilton mills the big silver one i know somebody out there got it because it had to be on sale at like Macy's or Target. And it it's one of them Black Friday door too. buster things where it looks like a microwave. Yeah, so like Minnie it, Cooper sitting on the counter. Yeah. That is not the same thing as a dedicated air fryer, yeah. which is what we're talking about. And so if you don't have an air fryer, I'm telling you, as the kids are coming home over the summer, Clutch. or if you've got like a, a tween who is trying to learn to be more independent and 
create some of their own meals or their snacks, this is a great tool because it's got that handle. It's not like the any day, which is actually hot when you pull it out the microwave. You need to, you know, protect your hands. It's not like an oven where there's so many ways that they can get burned or just like fall in. This is you grab the handle, you pull the food out, you stick it back in or you dump it, whatever. And then it's easy to clean. It's no mess. It's low stress. And I feel like any household that has other independent people in it as they're becoming more independent, they need to use this this tool. So if you don't have one, another great gift idea. (laughs) Yeah, I for, think, I for think, the upcoming holidays of Mother's Day, Father's Day, graduation and weddings. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, wedding season. I stand by all of these things that we use them. Um, the only other than the lunchbox, I don't have that because we don't really have a need for it. But I Yet. see a world where we'll likely be getting one. Yeah, we definitely get maybe one. multiple um, because even when I was thinking about when our son is going to camp, I remember last year yes. being very frustrated. He would go to these summer camps and we would try to pack his favorite lunch and then he wouldn't eat it. And he just end up wasting food because like, it's not the same. And so now it's like, all right, no, I get it. It's not the same, you know, and I don't want you to lose your love or appreciation for these things because like you ate it and it was cold and didn't quite taste the same. I might consider getting it. I don't know how much they cost yet, but I guess I can check our Amazon store. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get you one. Knowing you, it's, it's probably already <laughs> yeah. on its way here. And so, yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, that concludes our list of kitchen tech. I hope you learned something. If you did, let us know. Leave us a five-star rating, a review, or a comment below to keep the conversation going. And I was told that People miss my dad jokes at the end of the episode. So uh, I'm going a, I'm to a bring those back. Okay. So let me start at the top now. <laughs> okay. All right, y'all. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Rich and Regular Podcast. You know, I can't cook, but I can roast. And I'm going to start roasting people. <laughs> Don't leave reviews after they listen to an episode that they got something from. That's not bad. That's not bad, right? That was pretty I ain't going to really roast y'all. Like, you know, I'm talking shit, but That's not bad. <laughs> we appreciate every like, comment, subscribe, and review, and we will see y'all next week. Peace. If you like videos like this and want to see more, make sure you click subscribe and turn on notifications. 